What we have here is a Havel H9. It's one of the increasing number of four-wheel drives from China that's coming onto the Australian market. China, if you don't know, makes more cars than any other country in the world now. In fact, twice as many cars as the USA, which used to be the world's biggest car producer. They even make more cars than the whole European Union combined. So it's more than Germany, France, UK, Spain, Italy, all added together. They do that off the back of an enormous domestic market that's becoming increasingly more affluent, especially more affluent middle class, so they can avoid vehicles like this. And Havel is actually China's biggest manufacturer of SUVs and four-wheel drives. If you're wondering what this is, think Prado. It's same basic proportions of Prado, seat seven like a Prado, separate chassis, dual range gearing, live axle at the back, independent front suspension. You know, in fact, you, you, you couldn't say it's a rip-off of a Prado, but it is very much a Prado copy. The only big difference between this and a Prado is there's no diesel. So it only comes in petrol, and the petrol engine is only a two-litre four, but it has a turbocharger, which helps make up for the performance. Okay, here we are driving the Havel H9. Two-litre turbocharged petrol engine, as I said, which for this style of vehicle, when this weighs over two tonnes, it's about the same weight as a Prado doesn't really sound right in a lot of ways it's not because the consumption's a bit high um, easy driving 14 15 litres per 100k push it harder on a windy road uphills off-road low range whatever fuel consumption goes north fairly quickly um, that said it doesn't seem to work all that hard it's um, the turbocharger has a fair bit of torque across the range so it's reasonably relaxed it's quiet you know sort of does its job without too much effort. Mates nicely to the six-speed automatic. It's actually a, a German ZF gearbox, so it's a premium gearbox. So good, good quality shifting, smooth, picks the right gear at the right time, and makes up for what shortcomings the engine has in terms of bottom end power. Full-time four-wheel drive also helps on this sort of gravel road we're on now. Um, all sorts of driving conditions, but you don't have to worry about going from um, two-wheel drive to high four, you just it's in four-wheel drive, so it's good good touring vehicle in mixed conditions. As for the chassis, the steering's pretty light, and probably on centre is a bit vague at times, but you get used to it. It's not too bad. Suspension's soft, uh, very comfortable on bumpy roads. At higher speeds, again on bumpy roads, it gets a little bit untidy, but. Nothing that a decent set of aftermarket dampers wouldn't fix. I mean, I think the spring rates are probably fairly close to the mark, but just some sort of better controlled dampers would make the thing much more enjoyable and handy on sort of Australian conditions. I just probably think they haven't tuned it for the sort of roads that we've got in this country. What it does have is an absolute truckload of equipment. I mean, it's got everything that opens and closes. It's sat nav, sunroof, heated seats, air conditioning seats. The seats have even got a massage function. Um, you know, it's everything, everything you really want. I and mean, the only equipment it doesn't have is any high-end safety stuff like um, blind spot monitoring, autonomous braking, lane departure warning. And you get all that for a little bit over 50 grand. I mean, that's sort of, you know, to get that in a, a Toyota Prado, you're probably looking at a Kakadu model and that's what mid 80s plus on-road costs. So for what you get, it's cheap. Look, while this thing's Extremely well equipped and well priced for the well equipped for the money. Uh, what it doesn't have is the option of a diesel engine. It's the, the petrol turbocharged four cylinder engine is the only engine option, which is a shame because what it really needs is a diesel. I mean, a two, two and a half to three litre diesel, say 130, 140 kilowatts, 450 newton metres, give or take a bit. As it is with a petrol engine, sort of doesn't really work in our market. I mean, most people who buy these things go for diesel. If you look at something like a Prado, which comes with a, a diesel engine, and a very good petrol engine, only one or two percent of buyers go for the, for the petrol engine. So I can't see this thing the way it is. And even though it drives well and is nicely equipped, I can't see it finding much favour with drivers with the, the petrol engine.